Hi everybody, welcome back to our lecture computer animation, this time about multi-resolution modeling. So the problem here is models with constant geometric resolutions are not always efficient because the number of pixels per polygon varies depending on the distance to our virtual camera. And that means we have a high computation effort, which does not lead to better visual representation, right? because we have to compute all those um, uh, those nodes and polygons, even though uh, they are not even visible. So the approach here is to have a variable geometric resolution design, depending on the distance to the camera, according to the required precision. So, for instance, the level of detail, LOD, this is a complete model which is available in different geometric resolution levels, or the multi-resolution modeling and animation, this has different resolution levels which are procedurally, procedurally linked with each other, um, and an animation is possible in all levels. So that's uh, what the procedurally linked um, function is doing. So then we have the local refinement, which are polygons or patches, which are reduced in places where high geometric resolution is required. So these polygons, um, they are then made of more fine, which means we have more of them. Then we have control points that can be um, um, only at points where they contribute to geometry, for instance in NURBS, which we already saw, or T-splines, uh, where we can insert control points. Then we have subdivision surfaces, which is a refinement process. This it means an iterative generation of smooth surfaces from simple models. So now more about these. First, the level of detail. This means a model is available in several geometric resolution levels and small objects which occupy only a few pixels in the image can be rendered in low resolution because it doesn't make a difference if it's a low resolution and or high resolution if it's uh, only appearing as a small object. Yeah, and this avoids unnecessary arithmetic operations and improves the rendering performance. It's faster. Smaller detail levels are often automatically created from higher resolution models in this way, if, if you want to have more detail. So here's an example. So here we have a rabbit at different resolutions. So here we have a high resolution of 69,000 polygons, and then we reduce the number to 2,500, 251, and just 76. So this resolution you would use when the rabbit appears far away, only as a small object, and the highest one you would use when it's nearby, when you can see all those details. Yeah, then we have multi-resolution modeling and animation. This is a procedural linking of the geometric resolution levels in, and it changes in low resolution, um, changes in low resolution affects the high resolution and changes in high resolution affects low resolution. So they are connected if you um, um, change the object, like changing the face, um, changing uh, uh, the visual expression and such. This greatly simplifies the animation of complex objects. Often a combination of level of detail and local refinement is used. So here's an example for face. So here we have a face in high resolution and you can see here the mouth is opened and this then propagates through the models for lower resolutions. Yeah, so we have a transfer of the animation to all geometry levels. And so here the mouth is, mouth is closed and you see the same in all geometry levels. Here 
again the mouth um, here low resolution and here in high resolution so here we could for instance start low resolution and it also has an effect in high resolution yeah then we have local refinement uh, this reduces the size of the polygons or patches at places where details are to be displayed. So when we want to have more detail, we reduce the size and the number of polygons or polygon patches or surface patches where we want to have more detail. So this is an increase of a local geometric precision. And we have an improvement of control possibilities in these places uh, because of uh, the number of control points that we get there. And it also means a data efficient work is possible. So here you can see an example. Here's the object and you can see it's mostly an empty space, an empty surface, but then we have those peaks coming out of it. And of course here the peaks you want to have at a higher resolution because here we have more detail in the object. Whereas on the surface here, there's not much going on and you can have less resolution, um, larger polygons, which you can see here. So here you can see the polygons and you can see they become smaller close to those peaky objects, you know, those spikes. You know, so in this way you can model those spikes more precisely and you don't need to uh, model um, the surface precisely. Yeah, then you have subdivision surfaces. This is the extension of principle to surfaces, um, the subdivision of surfaces. And the starting point here is a relatively low resolution polygon mesh. And we approach the desired surface shape through local refinement. And so this is what you already saw in the one dimensional case. This leads to um, by square uniform B-spline surfaces with rectangular polygon meshes and binary subdivision. Here you can see more in this Wiki Wikipedia link about subdivision surfaces. So here we call this um, quadratic uniform B-splines. So here's an example for it. Step one, a coarse resolution. Step two, here we do our refinement to let it appear, appear more rounded. And then we go on in the next step three and the final step four, where the letters become very rounded. So for letters that might not always be desirable, but for objects like faces, this is always desirable because faces don't have edges, but they're rounded. Yeah, so here's a procedure for it, according to um, different um, algorithms. There's the Doe-Sabin scheme, after Donald Do, Malcolm Sabin from 1978. Then there's the Katmal-Clark scheme by Ed Edward Katmal and Jim Clark, also same year, 1987. And there's the Loop scheme after Charles Loop from 1987 and they are available in common 3d programs like maya 3ds max or blender the open source blender or as a plugin there are also further schemes for special areas of application so here the do seven scheme this is basically the application of the chaikin chaikin algorithm to surfaces two-dimensional so again, we take the edges and um, mark them at one quarter and three quarter of the length and put, um, um, and put edges there. Yeah, and then we have the intersections resulting from parallel lines through these divisions are new vertices. And this uh, um, converges to bi-quadratic B-spline surfaces. So it should be converges.
you know, so just in the case like 1D, the same happens in the 2D, uh, the subdivision scheme um, with a one quarter and three quarter length um, converges to quadratic by quadratic B-spline surfaces. Yeah, then we have the Du Sabin scheme. Uh, this is another description using auxiliary points in the following places. We have the corner point of the original polygon. Then we have edge points, which are the centers of the adjacent original polygon edges. Then we have face points, which are the center point of the polygon, the average of the original vertices. And then we have a new vertex, which is the midpoint or average between these point four auxiliary points and new points replace the old points. So this can be seen then here in this these uh, pictures. Here is our starting um, polygon and here we create um, new, a new um, edge and face points. And then the average of those four is the new vertex. Right, and this means we get this uh, this new object here, and we can then continue the scheme here, and you can see it becomes more and more rounded in this way. So here you can see we start with a cube, and then we make this cube more round by iteratively applying this Du Sabian scheme. Yeah, then the Katmar Clark scheme after Edwin Katmar um, at the computer division of Lucasfilm, Jim Clark, um, who founded SGI and later Netscape. So, influential people here. And um, they came up with this subdivision scheme. They have face points, which are the center points of the polygons, and the average of the original corner points. Then we have edge points, which is the average of the center of the original edge, for instance, the vertical edge in the image, and the center of the, of the face points of the polygons bordering this edge. And then we get a new vertex um, according, to this for, uh, according to this formula here. So n is the number of polygons adjacent to v, V is the original vertex, R is the average of the midpoints of the adjacent edges. So here's the point, and Q is the average of adjacent face points. Right, so these are vectors here, and this is the number. You can see taking those vectors here in this formula, we get a new vector. And then we connect face points with edge points and connect the new vertices with adjacent edge points. So this can be easily more easily seen here in, in these pictures again. So here the starting point, then we in, um, compute the face points as the average of those um, points spanning this triangle. Here we have the F, the face points. Then we create new edge points here in the center of those lines. And yeah, this then creates our new object here. Yeah, and we can also do this iteratively and then we uh, converge to a sphere. So we come from this cube apply this Catmull clark scheme iteratively and then it looks more like a sphere um, instead of a rounded cube. So that, that's also an interesting property here. Yeah. Then uh, finally the loop scheme. This is from Charles Loop. Um, he got a master's in mathematics from the University of Utah in 1987 and his thesis was smooth subdivision surfaces based on triangles. So they, basically this came out of his master's thesis. And um, he also got a PhD in computer science from the University of Washington in 1992 with a dissertation on 
generalized B-spline surfaces of arbitrary topological type. Yeah, so this is only suitable for polygon meshes made of triangles. Each triangle is divided into four new triangles, and the edge points are weighted sum of weighted sums of the edge points of an edge and the two points of the triangles adjacent to the edge. And the vertex points are the original vertex plus weighted sum of adjacent vertices. For each original triangle, a vertex point is connected with two edge points. So this can also be seen here in this image. We start again with this cube, and then we create new points which we connect, and this results then here in this rounded cube. Yeah, and finally we have the T-splines, uh, which is um, to obtain an adaptive level of detail. So this is the generalization of NURB surfaces, non-uniform rational B-splines, and a superset of the catmar clark subdivision surfaces. Yeah, so NURBS is equidistant uniform grid of control points. Right. We, you know, remember, we could give those control points different weights uh, from those um, rational B-splines. Um, and we could also multiply um, control points um, to give them more influence. But T-splines now allow a row of control points that can be terminated before reaching the edge. Right. So basically, this means we can insert additional control points. So that means we have a possibility of local refinement on NURB spaces. And as mentioned, those additional control points can be inserted, also individual control points. And that uh, leads to a reduction of the amount of data with constant geometric precision. Right? So we put those control points where they are necessary. So here you can see an example. So, for instance, here you can see additional control points for refinement. And here you have a NURBS refinement where you can multiply control points and put them closer together. Here you have a start point and an end point. Right? So, they are not always there. Yeah, so here's an example. Here we have a dinosaur, the Triceratops, and we model them uh, with NURBS. So here you can see we need 15,588 control points to model it sufficiently. And for T-splines, we can save on the more smooth areas and uh, remain only 8,432 control points. So here you can see we have the control points where they are really necessary, where you have the peaks and fine details. But here on the belly, we have much, many fewer points than in the NURBS model. Yeah, and that should be it for today. Thank you for your attention and then see you next time.